AQA A-Level Physics. Uh, this is my video number six on turning points, and it is about the ultraviolet catastrophe. So I suggest that before you watch this video, um, you should maybe watch my GCSE video. I'll put a link below uh, about black body radiation so that you know what a black body is and you understand basically the spectrum of a black body. Uh, pretty basic stuff. Uh, the key points are a black body absorbs all the radiation that falls on it. It absorbs the radiation uh, and then to stay in thermal equilibrium, it will re-emit it, but not necessarily at the same wavelength. Yes, so a black body doesn't reflect radiation. It absorbs it and then it re-emits it um, it does not reflect radiation and the wavelengths of the stuff that it emits, uh, the wavelengths and the intensities of the radiation it emits depends only on its temperature. So we get this spectrum of radiation which it emits and the shape of the spectrum uh, and whereabouts the, the peak is depends on the temperature. How do you actually study the spectrum for different temperatures? Uh, you get this cube and you put the cube in an oven and you get it up to a certain temperature. Uh, and then there's a hole in the cube. And, and the idea is that uh, it, any radiation which is produced by the walls of the cube, the inside walls of the cube, uh, in other words, the stuff that it emits comes out of this little hole here. Uh, and then you have a kind of a special spectrometer, uh, which is basically like a diffraction grating kind of thing, uh, to separate the different wavelengths. And then you can measure the intensity of the different wavelengths with a, some kind of a detector. Uh, if any radiation actually gets in the hole, then the idea is that because it's a small, narrow hole, then it's going to bounce and bounce and bounce and be absorbed before it, it actually is reflected and comes out again. So the only radiation coming out of the hole is radiation which has been emitted by the object itself, by the internal walls of the cube. Okay, now at low temperatures, now there was um, wave theory at the time, the theory about electromagnetic radiation is you could predict what the spectrum would be. But and at lower temperatures, you know, up to four or five hundred Kelvin, the 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 wave theory agreed with the experimental evidence quite well. But at higher temperatures, there was a big difference. If you look at this graph here, so uh, these three graphs here, three thousand Kelvin, four thousand Kelvin, five thousand Kelvin. They're from actual experiments. They're from experimental evidence. Now, the classical theory at the time, the wave theory at the time, would have predicted that you'd be quite close at lower temperatures. But then as the temperatures got bigger, it was a massive difference. In fact, the, the theory at the time predicted that for higher temperatures, you're going to get massive and massive and massive amounts of very short wavelength radiation. Uh, almost going to an infinite amount of ultraviolet. And that was the ultraviolet catastrophe. The catastrophe was that their theory didn't work. Yes, the wave theory didn't agree with the experimental evidence. And that is the ultraviolet catastrophe, the nightmare, the ultraviolet nightmare. OK, uh, basically, that equation there doesn't work. That was the current wave theory there, and that didn't work, and you don't need to know that equation. Now, this bloke here, 1900, Max Planck, uh, basically came up with a mathematical equation, and this is his equation here, which does work. Okay, and he, to do that equation, he came, with, uh, came up with an assumption, and the assumption was that the atoms, yes, the atoms of the object uh, can only have discrete amounts of energy. And so the photons that they emit 
can only have certain amounts of energy. And with this idea of discrete packets of energy, he came up with this equation, which you don't need to know at the top right, which matched the experimental evidence. In other words, he assumed that energy is quantized. There was no evidence at the time that energy was quantized, apart from the fact that his equation matched the experimental evidence. Yes, his Planck's law produced a curve that matched the evidence. OK, he didn't actually believe that the energy was quantized. It was just a, math a mathematical ad hoc solution. OK, the evidence came later on. And we're going to look at some of that in the next couple of videos.